All right, all you lovely and loving chess players of the world, here we are. Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess Videos. I have a fabulous treat for you tonight. Yeah! I found a Gary Kasparov game. He's versus Kangis. K-E-N-G-I-S. Kangis? I, I hope that's his pronunciation. They played in Riga, 1995. This is a simply marvelous darling. I, I've never quite seen anything like this. I, I'm going to use more Gary Kasparov. Let's, let's explore this game. Let's just, let's take a look here. E4, C5. C, profundity everywhere. One move and the game is almost over. <laughs> All right, slightly exaggerated. Not bad, though, not bad. Okay, knight F3. He comes out swinging. E6, he comes out defending. Yeah, baby. D4, he comes out with a slug. C takes D4. Ooh, a knockdown. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't boxing. Come on, explain the idea. Simple. They're fighting for the center. None was better than Gary Kasparov at this. Knight takes D4. And the fight is on. You know how the song goes in uh, Eddie Murphy's movie? The heat is on. The fire is hot. Oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to be singing. This is not entertainment nightly. This is Backyard Professor Chess Videos. So, where was I? Knight to C6. You can see, really, that they're serious about influencing the center and trying to outdo each other. That's what makes good, powerful chess. I promise. And Knight C3. As a general rule, uh, knights developed before bishops. Now that's not ironclad. That's not set in concrete. You'll see a lot of grandmasters pull out one knight, one bishop, and then the next knight. Most, a lot, pull out both knights and all. So as a general rule, that's why we usually do see knights out first. Okay? Just, and, and again, we see this. Queen comes to c7. Good diagonal. Nice. Bishop to e2. He's going to get ready to castle. a6. He's going to... My suspicion is both these knights, they could really do a number on the queen side if black's not careful. And so this little uh, a6 move prevents the knights from coming here and really doing some heck on wheels sort of dancing so that's a preventative measure so Kasparov castles instead sulking no he wasn't sulking I'm just kidding I didn't watch him play this game I wish I would have though that would have been fun King h1 and now knight takes d4 knight attacks the knight two knights in the center like that that's that's pretty tough it's it's in and no, he's not totally developed yet. Neither is Kasparov, as far as that goes. But those two knights alone, uh, with a bishop coming up in here and a queen, that's that's tough stuff. So it does make sense that he's already exchanging at least one of the knights. That's not a mistake on Black's part, I don't think. Queen d4 and bishop. C5, boy, a direct hello to the queen, yes. So he bumps her down, just one. Not a, there's nothing really uh, dramatic he has to do. Just get her out of the way for the moment. It's okay, she'll be back in action shortly. H5, and now bishop to G5. This is, uh, this is a typical... Bishop thrust, there, it's not pinned to anything at the moment, but it, it is a great developing move. 
if he decides he wants it and uh, he has to retake with the pawn, it'll kind of goof up the king side, if nothing else, for kind of like future insurance, swapping a piece. Although Kasparov does have the bishop pair. Well, of course, and so does, they've only swapped the one knight, haven't they? They both got the bishops, so. B5. Here he comes on the queen side. He wants to, it appears, that, look, you've got the queen in front of the bishop battery. That's tough, really. You have the knight. He's going to limit the, uh, the movement. Going to cramp the queen side a little bit against white here. That looks like it appears black is doing a lot of pawn moves because black is doing a lot of pawn moves. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? There's a direct... <laughs> no, true. stone cold serious there is a direct correlation between it looking like he's making a lot of pawn moves and the fact that he is making a lot of pawn moves that's no kidding I mean you know logic it's a beautiful thing to study I'm telling you <laughs> oh my what a nincompoop I'm being well Kasparov pushes gaining space on the king side. So we have this swirl. The black force is coming this way and the white force is going that way. Like yin and yang. Hey, there's a yin and yang. You can see the abstract yin and yang in this chess game. Okay, whoa, dude, you are so far out, man. He does free and keto his bishop. Beow. Nice central. Boy, you can see the battle. Yeah, it, it is raging here. They're not taking just 10 seconds to move here. They're, they're thinking through things and doing some calculating. And no, I'm not about to try. It's Gary Kasparov. But the pillars help us make sense without worrying about the 38 different 14 and 15 move variations. Watch what Kasparov does here. Very cool. Pushes for more space, but he is now hitting the guardian of the king side with a pawn, not just a bishop. So this changes the dynamic of black leaving that knight there. Now he's got to think about it. He doesn't mind swapping a bishop for a knight. But a pawn for a knight? Uh, no. Not happening. If he can help it. So the tension is elevating here. And see? Knight d5. Yeah, he moved the knight. And uh, look, that, that doesn't... Yeah, a lot of black's energies over here, huh? Truly. White, it appears to me at this point that white uh, has more pointing to the king side. He, he's actually more evenly distributed in the center, huh? This is very generalistic. But look, it's still getting a, a grasp. That's all we're after as beginners and intermediates anyway, right? So, he, coming here to hit the knight, he, good outpost, great central influence. However, it looks to me like black's getting a little bit too much this away. White is more center, and, and his, his pointing is that way. So, black's got to pay attention here, in my opinion. That's what it looks like to me. I know without question that this pawn is not the most important piece in this game. So we're making progress. <laughs> yeah, baby! You stick with me, we're going places. Yeah, whatever. Okay, uh, well, yeah. Knight will exchange the knight. That is, makes perfect sense. Now look what this does, though, for the bishop. Check this out. 
look how that exchange uh, favors Black's white squared bishop. Now look at his influence. That, that's pretty good. That's not bad. The center is somewhat cluttered. That's true. There's a lot of furniture there. But the bishop had a kind of a clearing there. And on a, on a post. Good post. So that's, that's not bad. That's not bad for Black. He can't, uh, he can't be disappointed at that. Um, a four, he's going to try to counteract the counterattack. Although really, I mean, nobody's really attacking yet. They're more or less just trying to keep the influence in the center going. Doesn't it appear to you that way? And no one has directly, absolutely started to attack so he, it's not like he's attacking a counterattack. It looks more like he's preventing. I mean, look, both bishops here. That's a lot of, that's a lot of power, man. It really is right there. So Kasparov is trying to minimize somewhat the influence. Not really attacking the queen side. Just keeping an eye on it. Queen c6. Ooh. Giving support. See, look, that cleared with the knights. Uh, why not put the queen behind that? Right. Look at the fork, the bishop fork here, potentially. So sure, if you were wondering, well, I'm black, the pretty busy position. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? This makes pretty good sense, doesn't it? Yeah, you, you just kind of, you say, oh, okay, yeah. And we could have seen that. And it's not so subtle, so deep, that we don't intuitively see that, well, yeah, that, that's a move I could do, right? So Black's doing pretty good. Uh, look at Kasparov. Yeah. See that that center that center diagonal is just sweet for black. There's no point in letting him have that. None whatsoever. Kind of like a rook on an open file. Well, a bishop on a diagonal with the backup of a queen. There's no reason for you to let him have that. Fight him with it. Got a good rook as a base. He's backed by the pawn. But he doesn't want to. If he can help it, he doesn't want to mess up too much of the king side, although he has pushed the F pawn. Uh, that is helping him be pretty solid on the king side. So, I mean, that, that's, that's a good move. Yeah, yeah, that, that's... In case you were wondering, holy crap, what do I do now? Look, that is really a good move, <laughs> right? There's not much else you can say about that. Bishop f3, and the bishop will take the bishop. And like I say, you know, target. But really, you don't want to retake this with the pawn. Try to keep a little cover with your king, and that's why he retook it with the rook. Not the queen. Material is even, um, but you don't want to swap the queens. Kasparov didn't. I wouldn't. Um, take it with the rook. You're fine with the rook. And let's see. B takes a4. He does keep, uh, he keeps attempting to press the queen side, at least with the pawns, somewhat. Uh, and now, here, okay, now, now the king side attack begins. I, w I would say with the push of f5, you are attacking the cover of the king. Um, so here we go. You have had an exchange of bishops. Kasparov's pawns are further forward. He does have a little bit more room to manipulate. Notice the imbalance is space. You can see that Kasparov has more space. Notice how horizontally, Kasparov could move fairly easy, whereas this guy can't. 
that that's what I mean when when we say, well, he's got more space, it's it's better, it's easier to put your pieces on the stronger squares or in the better position. Horizontally, he can do that really much easier than black can, and that is directly because of the extra space. So, see, it makes sense what Silman says, really, about this idea of gaining extra space with the pawn pushes and then support them with the you know, support the pawns with the pieces. That's a great illustration of that, man. That's not bad. At this point, you have to just see that white has the better position. Really, I, I don't think there's any question about that uh, right now. So, very interesting to see. Rook b8, he grabs the first real big partial file. Um... Yes, he does have a target. Uh, no, it's not going to help him. You can almost, you can almost see, in a way, Black's kind of trying to. It's more of a desperate bid for counter attack than it is an actual bona fide counter attack. You kind of get that impression because Kasparov is so much further. Uh, well, he's got so much more power into his side of the attack than just a lone rook, <laughs> right? That's kind of what inspires you about Kasparov's position as opposed to the black's position. Just kind of fun to look at. Uh, rook A to F1. Double rooks on top. Granted, it's not an open file, but it is an attacking file because he's going to push that pawn or else uh, exchange, and then, then it will be the file. There's your target right there, right? That's a target also, but I mean, the rooks are going right to there, and gosh, the king's right there, and the bishop is going to keep him that way, right into the file. So, wow, good power move. And it makes perfect sense why he did that. That's nice to see, isn't it? Very cool. Uh, black castles. Now, this helps change the dynamic somewhat for black. Now, instead of the uh, the king having to defend that pawn, now the rook, which is a much better piece for doing that, you can see that just changes the whole dynamic, doesn't it? That really does help black. Probably not enough, but at this point, Kasparov plays a wicked move. You kind of go, oh, man, he's an animal. It's a great move. Um, and it's just right into the, you know, it's right into the dragon's lair, so to speak. He puts this bishop right there. <laughs> what a move. That is so awesome. <laughs> uh, no, you're not going to take that bishop. <laughs> no way. Again, let me let me just just bear with me for a sec. Because the consequence of Kasparov getting more space, pushing those pawns, yeah, and, and his bishop here too. So that he has look at his vertical. Yeah. Look at his horizontal. He just has a way physically in the game to improve his position and have a stronger attack than uh, what? The cramped, the single, the soft, the not. This seems too airy. There's just not enough here. This just feels more solid, doesn't it? What inspires us to think that way is seeing not only the vertical, but the horizontal capability. Because you can see what's coming. It's obvious. 
Let's keep watching. Queen B5. He is trying to hurry, but because uh, this is so strong, black would like to change queens. That makes sense. He knows at this point, white really does have the winning position here. Really. So, it really does make sense to want to swap your queens. And, and you say, well, we're in the heart of the battle. We're in the middle of... I know, and well, and the queen is the strongest piece. I know, but look. Look at the logic here. She can't because... Kasparov has more space, black is more cramped, the queen can't get to where she's more effective on that side, protecting the king. You see that? She physically just can't get there. White's already there. If the queen was here already, Look at the difference of that. That's huge, man. But she's not. And what she can't, she can't get there. So yeah, it's your most powerful piece. In this particular battle, it is far better to swap than to keep that queen. Get rid of Kasparov's queen if he'll trade. Does that help see why that move makes sense for black? I don't know if it's a power move or a desperate move. Uh, well, it's a, a desperate move. White's just going to mow you over, man. And no, Kasparov doesn't care about the queen at all. He puts the rook right on g3. Here he comes, man. Kaboom. And man, there's not much protecting that king, is there? No, it's all it's all over here, and it's really not coordinated. I mean, the rook, the rook and the queen, but the bishop doesn't. There's just nothing there, man. Black is in real trouble here. With that rook move, black is had. You can see that, and black knows it, so he puts the the pawn here. He does not take the bishop now because the pawn is pinned so try as you can to strengthen the king side you're not going to be able to do it very well however <laughs> which is unfortunate it's fortunate for us to be able to see how advancing the pawns weaken the castle king side this is a great game that illustrates that just a really great game let's keep looking uh, queen, yeah, g6, and that, and Kasparov's not going to swap. He says, no, I don't, I, I want my queen. And Black's probably sweating bullets now thinking, man, I've got to find a way to get rid of these queens. At least his. <laughs> right? I mean, who doesn't want to do that, right? Well, the pawn does get rid of the pawn from the e, which means that the it's been advanced, but it hasn't been cracked open. I mean, you don't see any real openings there, even though there are weak, dark squares literally all around him. That is certainly the... I mean, isn't that amazing? He wishes like crazy he could make a good defensive move with one of his pieces... But at this point, all he has is pawns, and that's the best he can do at this point. So, and of course, rook takes f5. Kablam. And again, that poor g-pawn cannot take the, the piece. So, not only did Kasparov gain space early on, he is still right in the midst of the attack. He is still expanding his space as much as he can, which is crimping black even harder. There is no way in that cramped position that anything 
of black can help his king. And yet, everything in the white arsenal is what's doing the cramping. It, it's a foregone conclusion, isn't it? That, that's a spectacular illustration of the power of the extra space, the power of the blockade. This bishop came up here and that pawn cannot move. He needs space so that he can double his rooks, for instance. He can't. There's no space. The value of the imbalance of space is really graphic here because, boy, would he love to have another rook right there or right here and here. You know what I mean? He can't even double his rooks. He's too crammed. Nice. That, that's a great illustration right there. Rook taking f5 just makes blacks cramp even worse. Uh, the rook does come up. Now, from a, from a distance, he's trying to get a little bit of horizontal uh, help to go. Right? And the... The move that Casper puts here is just sweeter than maple syrup on pancakes. It, it, it's incredible. This is why he kept his queen, because now he takes h5. <laughs> and <laughs> it's here that Black resigned. <laughs> and Kasparov's two most powerful pieces, man, are being attacked and neither one of them can be taken. Being attacked by the same poor pawn and neither one of them can be taken. <laughs> that is a that is an incredible end picture. <laughs> oh, what a great game. Hey, I'm gonna get more Kasparov games to show us. That that is really awesome. You'll notice Interestingly enough, the dynamic came from a diagonal, but the dynamic of the attacking file, and, well, the partial file here, because that bishop uh, blocked that pawn there, and then it did give the rook a partial file up, but holy cow, what, and then targets are everywhere. Of course. I'm trying hard not to overemphasize targets because I've already done that. That's kind of in the discourse, kind of like I'm doing with Silman's imbalances. But boy, to tie it all together, it's fun stuff to do. Fabulous. The majority of white's power is over there on the attack where white wanted them to be because he had the space to manipulate it. And the majority of black's defense is on this side. That's fascinating how it got separated. It got separated because Kasparov pushed those pawns and gained space faster than the black did. So there's your, there's your magnificent chess lesson. Thanks for watching my videos. I'm having fun making these, man. I love this stuff. I hope you guys are getting something out of it. Come and join us on the Backyard Professor Fan Club. I, I know it's almost, it, it just, I almost cringe saying that because it makes me appear vain or whatever. I'm the weakest player in the whole dang group, man, but we're having fun. We get together and chat and we're working puzzles together and solving the tactics and your profile shows what you're doing and I'm playing one game right now. I will play games with all of you. I'm in the midst of heck week with all this snow. <laughs> But it's turning to rain! That's the good news. So I may not have as much snow removal as I thought, which is glorious! Anyway, so in the meantime, be happy, get a lot of sleep, remember to drink more water, and I will see you in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.